Fellas, so these jugs by Bert, what happened? I wasted a bunch of gas in my boat, just ate them up, all right? The gas spilt, I had about an inch of gas in the bottom of my boat. <laughs> Here's what got me thinking though. Rackdoll mentioned that the product ought to be marketed as a marker buoy for that can catch fish as opposed to just a jug line. Because the way I jug line fish, it's just pure deep drifting jugs. It's the only thing I've found that works consistently for me. When I anchor these, I, I, I lose that main advantage. But it doesn't mean that these are worthless. What if, well, first of all, we could turn this into a drifting jug by just, I just put a hook on the end of that instead of a weight and just drift it with the rest of my jug. If you check out some of these guys in New Zealand who do long line fishing for snapper, essentially they're trot lines and they're not anchored to the bank. They're actually set out in the middle of open ocean water, a 120 foot trot line right there in the bottom of the river. And then coming up from that, the end of that trot line right on the hill and let it go straight down to the bottom. And then you just put that there. You got 75 feet of nice strong line to work with. I'm thinking there's way more possibilities than just an anchor jug line. Okay, so a New Zealand style or Kiwi style trot line, 200, at least 200 pound test line. Over there they use monofilament mostly. Here in the United States for trot lines we mostly use braid. All I have is twisted, again one of my triple threat swivels on the end. And what we're going to do is measure out 120 feet. That's a fathom, about 6 feet. We know 6 times 10 is 60, so 60 times 20. So if we strip off 20 of these, we'll have about 120 feet of line. We do have some braided 100 pound test line that we're going to use for our stops. Again, Jugs by Burt comes with his nice weight on it. And there we hit. That'll just, we'll cast that out on the bottom there. Peel off about a fathom braid here and tie us a uh, knot. Start here, overhand knot. I'm gonna do three. One, passing over the line. Three, tightening that up, okay. You're gonna snip those ends off. And you'll have a, one nice little knot there. And then what we're gonna do is go get some hot glue and glue that in place. And then every three feet, but we're gonna put a, another knot, a knot there and a knot there. So you remember these, the stem swivels that I use in my floats? We're gonna take them and turn them into trot line clips. Again, check out a guy named Paul Barnes. He has a cool YouTube channel about this stuff. And so what you can do is I get these jewelry pliers. We're going to take this straight swivel. If you want to try these, I'm willing to ship some out to you. If you want to try them, just like I do with most everything, you're going to cross it like that. All right, so it's like that. Take your needle nose and just a, just a quarter, not even an eighth of a turn there. All right? These floats should look familiar to you. These hooks should look familiar to you and these clips that you saw me make. So you'll just clip one. You know, you have this guy on the bottom. You clip one of these guys in. Bam, just like that. And because it has a float on it, the line will be resting on the bottom and the hooks will be just floating up. The hooks will float. You know, it's just like the Santee Cooper rig we talk about. Thing is, the catfish takes it, runs with it, runs with it, runs with it, runs with it, with it. boom, sets the hook, just like that. And what you do is on this second space here, let's see, you don't put a hook, you don't put a hook there, but you put a hook on this side of the other one so that the fish cannot cross the lines and tangle up. So you're putting a new drop every other knot. You're not having to deal with permanent, see how easy that came off? Just snip on, snip off. And that's the way they do it in New Zealand. Okay, so the trot line is going to be 120 feet long, probably going to have about 15 hooks. In Alabama, they allow you 100 hooks on a trot line. The other end is another triple threat swivel. And all you do is with the 75 feet, with 75 feet of 90 pound test line, you can get pretty deep. And all I do is put a loop on the end. The other weight on there. So you have one weight on one end and one weight on the other end. We may put one more weight in the middle of it so it'll hold it down. And then this sucker, the whole line's on the bottom, but because you got 75 feet of line here, I can fish a trot line 75 foot deep. Set your depth there just like he recommends. 
plop that sucker down in the water. Now, instead of just one or two hooks on this line, this thing's gonna have like 15 hooks on it. In Alabama, I could have 100 hooks. Since it looks the best, and we'll use it as our trot line, and the other two will rig up free floating, just like my other jugs. So in other words, with this, the trot lines, the actual snods, do not remain on the line. That's just dangerous and foolish. These are gonna remain on their own leader keeper. Right? So how do you stow the trot line? Well, guess what? You can just put them back on here. But that's a lot of line for such a shallow uh, draft jug. For me, guess what? I have one of these old, you know, one of my old hand lines and I'm, you see what I'm saying? Really? All right. All right. Neighbors. They're just hardworking guys like me, and they're just wish you know, that's what they do. I got a lot of work to do to finish this thing out, and I may not even get finished with it this week. It's time. If you're going to do a lot of bulk catfishing, now is the time.